morning to everybody. Let's uh, let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to gather this morning. Uh, we thank you for this time of praise and fellowship and the time we have to share with each other. And Father, we would just ask your blessings on all of us as we gather today. We ask your blessings on this congregation, all of the members of this congregation. You know the wants and the needs of those here better than we do. And Father, we would just ask that you can, can continue to guide and direct us in all that we do. We ask that you help us to be examples of your love uh, and, and examples of faith for those around us. All these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is page number 786. Count your blessings, page number 786. seated please. I'd like to welcome everybody this morning. Good to see everyone here and uh, we will have uh, our announcements and we have some in the bulletin. I have an extra here, extra announcement here, uh, but to highlight the ones in the, the bulletin, um, Monday there'll be no praise group practice. 
uh, Wednesday. As you'll note, Bible study has ended for November. The Advent Bible study will begin December the 6th. So that'll be a Wednesday night, December the 6th. Uh, the community Thanksgiving service, we'll call your attention to that, will be held at Dundas Baptist uh, at 7.30. It was previous, previously announced that 7 p.m. was the start time, but that's 7.30 uh, at at Dundas Baptist. Also, choir and praise group will sing for the residents of Pine Valley Assisted Living on Monday, November the 27th uh, at 6 o'clock. So we'll call your attention to that. Uh, we've got another announcement uh, at Christmas movie night. This is Saturday, December the 9th. Uh, dinner will be at 5 o'clock and then the movie at 6. Uh, and the title of the movie, it looks like, is I Heard the Bells. Uh, dinner will consist of a baked potato bar, soup, and dessert. Uh, and we that's beginning at 5 o'clock on the 9th and movie at 6 o'clock. And there will also be a open house uh, that was added from 3 to 5 that same evening, uh, open house, and then dinner starting at 5. So we call everybody's attention to those. Are there any other announcements? Okay. Okay. All right, are there any other announcements that we need to add? If not, uh, we'll look and turn to our prayer concerns. We'll call your attention, of course, to the back of the bulletin. We, as always, there are quite a number listed there. I do have a list of some that were added during the uh, Sunday school hour, and um, we will read those out again and see if there are any more. Uh, Gus Mitchell was added. Spencer Moore. The family of um, Bubba Spencer and the family of Jane Ritchie. This is Jonathan Webster's aunt. Is that correct? And also the family of Edward Sharp. Those were added. Do we have any other additions? All 
right? Okay. All right, three that were added there, Dolores Kennedy, Dina Dooley, and Mark Rosinski. <clears throat> Any others? All right, if not, as always, we want to remember uh, all of those that are that are listed and the ones that have been added. Uh, at this time, we'll have our uh, meditation and our morning prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for providing us with guidance and love this week. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for shelter, for laughter, for strength, for friends and family, for healing and peace that we have felt, for grace and mercy, for food and drink, for art and music that delight us, for sights and sounds, for transportation that provides us access to doctors and nurses, for therapists, for soldiers and sailors, and emergency personnel that risk our li their lives for us. We thank you, dear Lord, for the teachers that listen and encourage us here at the church and here in our community. We thank you for caring for our youngest to our oldest member here in our church family and providing us with the children in which we can care for and pray over, we give thanks. For our family and friends that need your healing touch both physically and emotionally, we give thanks that we can approach you and that you hear our prayers. We pray for those on our prayer list this morning and those names that you have heard. We ask you to cover them with your love, to touch them with healing, and provide your peace that when they are feeling defeated by this world, knowing that you will be there, provide them with your strength. And Lord, we have prayers, private prayers of our own, that sometimes it's hard to find the words. And Lord, we ask you this morning is to listen to our silent prayers this morning. <coughs> Lord, we ask you to help those in Israel and Palestine. We seek your help to find an end to this conflict. And we ask that you provide what is needed to be able to help those who have been hurt. We ask these prayers and we give praise to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray and praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. From thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our communion hymn is on page 794, Let All Things Now Living. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds this morning as we prepare for communion. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, and after giving thanks, he broke it. He said, "Take eat, all of you." And likewise, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he said, "Take drink, all of you. For this is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for many." Thank you.
This morning as we prepare to bring our offering, let us have a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning at our time of offering, knowing that you are the giver of all good things in our lives and of all the blessings that we count in our in our daily lives. Father, we would just ask you uh, to bring our attention this time and at this time and help us to remember the many blessings, the many good things that you give us and all the things that we call our own. Father, we know are yours. They are just ours to look over and to look after while we are here on this earth. Father, we would ask as we give this morning that we do so with a cheerful heart, that we do so gladly, knowing that what we give here will be multiplied back to us and back to others in your kingdom many times over. Father, we would just ask your blessings on on each of us at this time in our service. We ask that you bless what we give, and we do all things in your name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. At this time, uh, we will have special music from the praise group uh, entitled A Medley of Thanksgiving.
Amen. Amen. Thank you, choir. Thank you. It's wonderful. Praise group. I am so sorry. <laughs> Thank you, praise group. It was wonderful. Our gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel of Matthew. And we are in Matthew 25, verses 14 through 30. Listen to the word of God. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave to five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in the charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And then the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I hid in your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But for those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of May God bless the reading of this holy word. Would you please pray with me? Almighty, gracious God, may the words of my mouth be acceptable unto you, and may the meditations of our hearts be also. Amen. As we come upon Thanksgiving, as we get prepared for that big turkey, that ham, and we prepare for Thanksgiving, I can't help but think about all the talents that probably will be shared that day. Or maybe some, maybe not so talented. But that's why we sometimes have restaurants and sometimes I think we're just a little tired. So I don't know what your Thanksgiving will look like. Hopefully that you will be present on Wednesday night for the community service. I think back to a story that Johnny Erickson Tata tells. If you remember, she was the young woman at the age of 17 that dived into the Chesapeake Bay, not realizing how deep the water was and she became a quadriplegic. And so years lady, later, I think she was about 32, she married, and it is time for their first Thanksgiving meal. She was from Maryland, and she married a man from California who has 
ancestors from Japan. So we know that there's going to be cultural differences. So she decides and she tells her husband, Ken, who has been with her all these years and in her ministry for 50 years, and she's excited and she's excited about the family coming to the Thanksgiving meal. Ken's parents are coming. And she says, We're, I'm going to make an oyster dressing. And he says, no, you're not. <laughs> what needs to be on the table is my mother's dressing. And the mother's dressing, dressing consisted of Ostermeyer bologna. And it had to be Oscar Mayer bologna because it contained the right amount of grease and the right amount of salt. And so she looked to the Proverbs. <laughs> and she realized that it was more important to feast with peace rather than strife. So the bologna stuffing made the table. And what that illustration teaches us is that Johnny Erickson, spelled J-O-N-I, if you know a little bit about her, that Johnny Erickson had the gift of hospitality. And through her organization, Friends and Family, that she is serving disabled adults and children for about 60 countries. She knows about hospitality. Now, she did include oyster stew with a few people partaking of it. But she had the gift of hospitality. And our parable this morning is about faithfulness. And for us to continue the work that Jesus has given us through our talents so that we will be joyfully welcomed when Jesus comes for us. So our parable this morning shouldn't surprise us when we read that the landowner went away for a long journey. For Jesus knew he would be leaving and probably wouldn't return anytime soon. So he offers this parable for the disciples to keep them engaged in the work that he left them. And at the time of this writing, when Matthew wrote this gospel, that Jesus had been away for at least 50 years. So offering up this parable in his gospel was fitting. So Matthew was teaching the church that Jesus is calling them to use the talents that God gave each one of them to multiply to increase the number of believers in their faith, to be fruit-bearing. And the story of the three servants calls us to take care of what God has entrusted us with, the message of the gospel, the good news that God sent his son so that the world would be restored, redeemed back to him, and how each one of us tells this story comes not just from determination, but it would be born from using the talents that God has endowed this congregation, has endowed each one of us, and the congregations that will exist in perseverance in years to come. For our tendency is time limited here at Perseverance. Amen? But the impact that we and others have left is not. And there are many who have been a part of this church who may be joining us virtually, whether live or recorded, who all can offer their talents to a church in their community. God calls us to use our God-given talent to serve the work that Jesus calls us. 
So in NIV translation, the metaphor for God's gift of Jesus and his forgiveness in this parable, this possession is gold. In the New Living Translation, it is silver. And while it is different, gold versus silver, it's fitting that how Jesus used two of the finest metals then and now. And Jesus is teaching his disciples that what God has given us, this precious gift of the good news, is of extreme value. The possession is not to be discarded. It's not to be hidden. For we would not discard coins of value, but rather to carefully wash over and cherish. In our culture, maybe Jesus would have employed a stamp or maybe even a baseball card collection. Amen? Something of value, something to be protected, and something to share. But in the new Revised Standard Version in King James, it is talents. So whatever translation is used, we get the understanding that what the master has entrusted the servants with is of great value, is a prized possession. And ever since the Middle Ages, the church assigns the word talent as a particular gift from God. So do we use or allow the church to use our special talents that God gave us to further the ministry of Jesus? To seek after the lost, to help the widow, to seek justice. And it probably won't surprise you when I say that the loss also includes believers. Amen? For many believers, many sheep in this community are sitting in the field going lost. Are we keeping our talents hidden, buried, or under lock and key like the third servant in our story? This parable teaches us that we are to use our talents or talents for others. In one of the epistles, 1 Peter 4.10, the writer of 1 Peter sends a letter to the churches in Asia Minor to help them keep faithful to the gospel message. And he writes, and um, this is from the Good News Bible, that each one, as a good manager of God's different gifts, must use for the good of others the special gifts that he has received from God. The first two servants used their talents. The master saw dividends, saw an increase, saw results. And the text says that the master was filled with joy because he found them working. And he invited them into the household of the manager, which is a pretty big deal. The church sees this as an invitation to the kingdom of God. And then there was the third servant, the one that hid what the master gave him. Are we guilty of that sometimes? Are we afraid to use the talent that God has given us? Matthew was written to help his church understand how they should live. Jesus says in Matthew 7, 21, that not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. It is the church's responsibility to preach and teach how Jesus calls all faith communities to work and live. So who is the faithful servant? In Matthew 24, 45, Jesus answers this question. And I'm reading from the message translation. A faithful servant is a person the master can depend on to feed the workers on time each day. Someone the master can drop in on unannounced and always find him doing his job. So the question becomes, are we feeding one another and are we withholding what Jesus has to offer us to help? So who is the faithful servant? It's the person who feeds the lost, feeds God's people with the talents they have available. Jesus teaches his disciples that eventually the time to serve will run out because the manager will be returning. 
And we see this movement of the manager in verse 1 and 19. The manager is with them. He leaves for a good while, just like Jesus. And in verse 19, he comes home, which reminds us of the second coming. Craig Keener, professor of New Testament at Asbury Theological Seminary, writes about those long journeys in the first century. And he writes that well-to-do masters often went on long journeys and sometimes to oversee properties elsewhere or on a government assignment. And given the uncertainties of transportation, as you can imagine in those days, he writes the return, time of return for even a well-planned trip could be uncertain. So the early church understood what Jesus was saying. In Matthew 24, 36, Jesus says, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. The first servant here kept himself busy. The master gave him five talents. He was faithful to those talents, and those talents helped many. And the next servant was also responsible and did what the master expected of him. The third servant is different. And that's where we need to look. We can't help but wonder what went wrong. It seems that the servant was unwilling to risk what the master had given him. He buried his talent and gave the talent back to the master upon his return. So basically, he did nothing. So how do we view our ongoing responsibilities to God? How do we view the talents that we inherited? Maybe we are frightened to use them. Maybe no one has encouraged us to try. Maybe no one has helped us. But without the use of, the, of our talents, persever perseverance will not live to be the church that Jesus imagines that we can be without all of us participating. So let us help and encourage each other in the use of our talents. We have a prized possession. We have the knowledge and the certainty of our God who sent us a Savior. God sent us Jesus as a gift to humankind who first came as a baby, then as a man, walked and lived in complete obedience to his Father. Jesus then went to the cross as a blood sacrifice for our sinful nature and through his power was resurrected. So how can we reciprocate? or respond back to Jesus for this gift, to use our talents so that we can share this gift with others. Maybe you have a lot of skills in administration. Maybe it's the gift of speaking. And you sure have practiced that for the last three years. Amen. Maybe it's the gift of preaching teaching, caring, shepherding, praying, your presence or more. And sometimes maybe it just requires the presence. We are called to share our talents to help others know our Lord Jesus Christ. In his parable, we see the joy and the generosity of God. The first and second servant were faithful and trustworthy of their master's possessions. And because there was an increase or fruit bearing, the owner of the land was pleased. Just think as we use our talents, how much we please him. We are the steward of this nation. We are the steward of this land. We are the steward, and we are called to use our talents to be able to do all that we can do for the kingdom of God. One of my favorite examples of what this might look what this looks like is in the 1940s, the Reverend Gordon Cosby founded Washington, D.C.'s first interracial church. And he worked with the missions of that church, it's called Church of the Savior, until he passed at the age of 95. 
kind of reminds me of maybe the work of Jimmy Carter or Rosalind Carter. Um, his holy work is one of the finest examples because it shows what it means to see a church employ all its talents. Because everyone that's a member of that church is involved in a mission of the church. And I used to have a poster, and I hope someday to find one again, that one of the quotes on the poster for the Church of the Savior, and doesn't say Church of the Savior, but one of the quotes from this church says, when the church is true to her nature, she will be in the world and she'll look like a sailor. And this is why our church leadership here at Perseverance calls upon each believer to participate in the life of the church by serving on one of our committees. What we produce in our separate committees working together towards the same goal can help us determine which one of these servants we most resemble. Who then is the faithful servant? Again, in Matthew 24, 45, it is the servants who Jesus has chosen to take care of his possessions. And Hebrew 10, 34 tells us what those possessions are. It is the goodness of the good news. It is the goodness of salvation. And what if, we don't, what if we don't participate in sharing this good news? What if we stopped working at this mission and just took care of ourselves? In this parable, the master chastises the last servant, the one who hid his talent. Jesus teaches there are consequences for unfaithfulness. And we might ask, why didn't that servant, that third servant, why didn't he get a second chance? Because the time was up. Because the master came back. And Jesus will be coming back again. Timothy was called by God. He stayed behind Paul in Ephesus and taught the church in Ephesus in 1 Timothy 4.10 about the importance of proclaiming the gospel to the very end. And he said, for to the end, we toil and we struggle. So are we guilty of hiding the talents that God gave us to strengthen this church? What good might we do in this community if we work, if you allowed the church to unleash all of our talents? Would that not be beautiful? What more can we accomplish for the least of these if we have permission to access all of our talents? Jesus needs your God-given talent for the benefit of the work that Jesus has left us. So who is the faithful servant? The master who can depend on to feed the workers on time each day. Someone the master can drop in unannounced and always find him doing his job. With our talents, may this church continue to do this necessary work until Jesus returns. Amen. Our hymn of invitation. It's on page 797. Come, ye thankful people, come. A very fitting hymn as we prepare for Thanksgiving this Thursday. Would you please rise? 797. If you have not proclaimed that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, we invite you to come forth during the hymn of invitation. And I would extend the right hand of fellowship on behalf of the church. Let us sing.
reminder to please come over to what we're calling the sheep pen and pick out your sheep. And again, that if you could not select your family, but we mean immediate family. And I know we're going to have to stretch it because everyone is related in this community. But I know that we can do a good job and we look forward to starting this program again. And um, happy Thanksgiving. We hope that you'll be able to come on Wednesday night. And um, as a little teaser that Jonathan's message is entitled, let me think of it again, by as God as my witness, I thought turkeys were fine. <laughs> WKRP in Cincinnati. Now, how he's going to weave that into our message is worth coming just to see that. So, again, please come and pick up some sheep. Um, I believe as I look around, everyone's name is on the board, so if you need to uh, participate in some of our homebound, have already picked some sheep, so there will be some of you. So, let us pray the benediction. May the God of hope you with all joy and peace and believing, for you were bound in